the same for us. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction. Uh, it's a real uh, pleasure and privilege for me to be here today, and I thank Dr. Desai for introducing a subject like organ donation to this uh, august audience. So let's talk about organ donation. And that is one thing which the country needs to do. I'm sure most people in this audience have been through schools, colleges, universities, without even once hearing the word organ donation. I did my medicine. I did my MD. I did my doctorate from PGI Chandigarh but I never heard anything about organ donation. And that precisely is what the issue is with our system. You see these six soldiers here? They were all dying of liver disease, cirrhosis of liver, vomiting blood, tummy full of water, bedridden, assisted living, with a few weeks or months to live. And this picture is after their liver got transplanted, when somebody donated the liver when they died and it was transplanted into them. What is noticeable here is that organ transplantation not just saves life, but see the quality of life. They've gone back to working in the army in uniform. We have people who have won a medal in the Olympics after a transplant. We have someone playing football for Barcelona after a liver transplant. Did you know all that? So let's see what this is all about. Where do these organs come from? Organs have two sources. In India, we have been primarily transplanting from living donors, which restricts transplantation to a kidney or a bit of the liver. What about the heart? What about the lungs? the pancreas, the intestine, we have lagged behind because we do not have donation after death. Which brings us to the question, can we donate organs after a normal death? And the answer to that is no. So how does organ donation happen? Organ donation can happen only in a condition called brain death. So in brain death, the injury occurs to the brain, the brain dies, but the heart continues to beat for some time. That is the scenario. That is the crucial thing which is very difficult to understand, very difficult to comprehend when you hear about it for the first time. And you imagine as a grieving family, when the doctor comes and tells you that your loved one is no more, would you like to donate the organ? And he says, doctor, what, what are you saying? His heart is still beating. How can you say this person is dead? So that's the problem. We are not introduced to this concept of brain death. And the first time when we hear of it, we are not in a position to understand it because we've lost a loved one. And hence, organ donation suffers. The diagnosis of brain death is not complicated, but our government has made safeguards. A team of four doctors do certain tests by the bedside. There is no CT scan, MRI, nothing fancy involved, no cost. We do bedside tests, repeat them after six hours, and sign not just the brain death certificate, but a death certificate with the heart still beating. So that is the concept which all of us need to understand. Everyone in our country is not as lucky as those six soldiers you saw. We need 400,000 organs in a year. And you know how many we transplant? 20,000. So less than 5% of the people who need an organ transplant in the country actually get one. So let's see what we need to do about it. So just to reiterate, six organs that we transplant, and one thing, we talk about eye, cornea donation all the time. It's not here. So one has to understand the difference between organ donation and tissue donation. Tissue donation can be done after a normal death. You can do this from home. 
So, after the normal death, when the heart has stopped, one can donate all the things that you see on the screen. But organ donation is possible only if one has a head injury or a stroke, one happens to be in hospital, in an ICU, on a ventilator, and the doctors diagnose brain damage. So, this is the aspect to understand here. Where are we as a nation in organ donation? We are actually nowhere in the world. Our current organ donation rate, which we have brought up with 12, 14 years of hard work, which was zero, is now 0 0.8 per million population. Countries like Spain are close to 40 per million population. And what is the reason for this? Let me tell you. This is my own mother-in-law. And after working in organ donation for about 10 odd years, we had the misfortune of losing her, but we ended up donating her organs. And what happened with us that night happens in every ICU in the country, in every hospital. And this was one of the major hospitals in South Delhi. She had a uh, massive brain hemorrhage, and she was in ventilator on coma. A CT scan done showed a huge 10 centimeter blood clot. And we knew that she's not going to make it. So after one day of treatment, second day of treatment, I find that her pupils are dilated, not reacting to light. I've been working in the field. I know that she is brain dead. But nobody is approaching me. They don't know that I work in organ donation. They know me as a gastroenterologist. So I go to the critical care person and I ask him, do you think she's brain dead? And you know what answer I get? She's about 95% brain dead, we will confirm tomorrow. There is no tomorrow in organ donation. It has to be in the middle of the night. The hospital had no brain death committee, which the government approved. They did not know what paperwork to do. They did not know what the law says, what documentation is required. Will they ever look me in the eye? They would run away in the opposite direction if there is a brain death. And that exactly is the issue what is happening day to day. We are supposed to have one brain death per ICU bed per year anywhere in the world. So if Delhi has, say, a figure of, say, 5,000 ICU beds, there have to be 5,000 brain deaths. Our patients are not different from the Western world. Where are they? Who is sitting on them? Who is hiding them? Why we are not coming out and talking about it? That is the issue. It's not the people of India who do not say yes to donation. The main issue is our own, where our own medical community doesn't know how. As a nation, we are very altruistic. We like to look after others, and I'll prove it to you. So there are three ways in which we can improve organ donation. Let's talk about the government first. The government, after about 10, 15 years, he came out with a new law, and I think that has made a big difference and will make a big difference. Earlier, whatever happened in the country, you know what uh, Vijay Amritraj once said? That we produce champions like Prakash Padukone, like Sunil Gavaskar, despite the system, not because of the system. And organ donation till now was happening despite the system. But with this law which came in 2015, it is now going to happen because of the system. Very good changes have been brought out. Earlier, brain death could be declared only in big hospitals which are transplanting. Now you can declare it in any hospital which has an ICU. Earlier, a neurologist was mandatory to be a part of the brain death committee. Now you can have a critical care specialist, anesthesiologist doing it for you. So a lot of changes have been made which are helpful. Now it is mandatory on the part of the treating team to ask the family for organ donation. Earlier, nobody used to bother. So all these changes are now a part of law. But there is many a uh, slip between the cup and the lip. And the issue is, you may pass a law, and, but it is often not implemented. So the organizations that work in organ donation, this was despite the system initially, now the new ones are in place. There is a national organ and tissue transplant organization, 
based out of Sardar Jung Hospital in Delhi. And there are rotos, regional autos all over the country. And every state has a sorto. So the system is in place to promote organ donation and to distribute organs in a fair manner to the people who deserve it. Because transparency in organ distribution is of paramount importance. You cannot have a minister or somebody coming and asking for organs out of line and getting away with it. That is a sure way of killing donation. No family will donate organs the day that happens. So this is the job of NOTO. And if you see here, this is the data of organ donors, the number of people who had brain death and donated from various states. Reasonable numbers, 570. This was zero 10 years ago. So a start has been made. But if you notice here, how many states and union territories are there? How many are missing? So do you know that the Transplantation of Human Organs Act was first passed in 94? The rules I showed you in 2014. But health is a state subject. Each state has to adopt the law what the union government passes. And so many of our states, which are in white here, haven't even adopted the law. Can you believe that? You cannot even declare brain death in any of these states because they have not bothered to adopt the law. So the change has to start right from the beginning. Every state adopts the law. Every hospital looks for brain death. Brain death declared. Family counseled. Family told that your loved one is no more. They have to Grieve. You cannot ask for organs straight away after talking about death. The heart is still beating. The family is told, your loved one is no more. Give them a few hours to grieve. Unless they cry, they will not understand that the loved one is no more. And that is the time the trained transplant co coordinators come in and start interacting with the family that we are sorry, you lost your loved one but there is something more you can do. So that situation never happens. This whole sequence of events does not happen. Few of our states have now started bringing out this organ donor label in the driving license like it happens in the United States. And this is a very good sign because at the time of making a driving license, you're asked whether you'd like to pledge to donate your organ. Let's see what we can do as a medical community. And I'll give you the example when what Fortis Healthcare has done for last, since 2012. So we have 18 hospitals which are transplanting organs. So we focused on them and we had this organization that I'm heading, which is the Fortis Organ Retrieval and Transplant. The first thing to do is to train your people. We've been talking about the importance of training. So we train everybody in the hospital, doctors, paramedics, nurses, everybody on what is brain death, what are the documents to be filled, what is the legal issue, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a helpline. We have people working on this 24-7. There has to be an organizational interest. Otherwise, these things don't happen on their own. So the hospital, which is keen to promote organ donation, must take it on as something they really want to do. And who are the people who talk to the family. I can tell you it is one of the most difficult jobs in the world to talk to a grieving family and ask them for organs. So those people have to be trained. And we realize that and we train transplant coordinators from across the country, a batch of 50 to 60 every year, and we have been doing them that consistently. And if you see here, I'm sorry the slide is not showing everything, we reached half a century of donors from that moment we started this program since 2012, only on 9th, which is two days ago, we completed 50 donors, donating more than 150 organs in all the various Fortis hospitals. What about public awareness? We have spoken about the government bit. We have spoken about the hospital bit. What about public awareness? And we launched a unique campaign along with NDTV was Fortis NDTV More to Give campaign. And I want to tell you a few things that we did, because these are things which can be done by everybody. So first, we had a, we had a brand ambassador. So Irfan, for us, spoke about 
organ donation and brain death in various forums. And the idea that came because of the armed forces, more to give, look at this. Here is Colonel Nanda who has a leg blown off in one of the wards and he's still pledging to donate his organ. So if he wants to give, he has more to give, why all of us here would not like to do the same. So that was the basis of the more to give campaign. And the spread of the campaign was for about seven months, initially internal, where we started honoring the organ donors, and then we had a lot of activities, which I'll just quickly show you through. There are a lot of donors and talk in the world about how to honor them. Some people say, let's give money to the donor's family. Let's give them some kind of uh, token that appreciates what they have done. But we are totally against that because once you start having a commercial talk in a family who has donated organs, that would kill the entire feeling that the family had. Today we are very happy that my mother-in-law is alive in five people. Her liver, two kidneys, corneas. But if somebody was to tell me, here is one lakh for what you did, it just kills the spirit of organ donation. And I'm sure you'll all agree. At the same time, something has to be done for these people. So we came out with the idea about a war memorial kind of situation. Again, a lesson from the army. So every major hospital in the country, Fortis Hospital, you find Anandpur also, has a wall where every time there is a donation, we put a star and we recognize what that family did. And look at this kind of picture that we get when people come to see their loved one. They would like to come there on his birthday, on the anniversary, and get a picture and remember. And this is forever. The families can come after 50 years, and would, they would remember what their father or grandfather did. And that, we thought, was a wonderful way of doing it. Another example, this is the uh, Kurapati family. We had to flow the, uh, fly them down from Hyderabad to Delhi for this function, because their son was working in Infosys when he had a brain hemorrhage, and they donated. So we spoke to Indigo that here we have people flying over, very special people, and we want to give them a special kind of treatment. So you know what we were able to do? They were picked up from home, given a priority boarding, and in the middle of the flight, perhaps for the first time in the world, because experts from Spain and US told us that we have not seen this, we made the crew make an announcement that ladies and gentlemen, we have with us today Mr. and Mrs. Kurapati, who did this. That is the kind of recognition that we can give to the family and not any kind of monetary thing. They don't need that. Mr. Shatrugan Sinha came for the inauguration of the wall in Mumbai, and the way he spoke was so amazing. We were always impressed by his way of talking. And the, at the end of the speech, he says, there's a slogan that I would like to say. Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan, you know in his voice, Jai Angdan. And I thought that was a fantastic thing that he came out with on the spot. We have interacted with all the religious leaders in the country, and they all say that our religion is not against organ donation. And I can tell you we have interacted with families for the last so many years now, and on religious grounds, people won't say no. This is totally against what we usually think. If the treatment of that person was top class, if the family was totally convinced that we did all the right moves and tried to save their loved one, but still failed, they will say yes to organ donation. But if they feel that the doctors did not do well, well enough, you can't even broach the topic. So the first thing is to have quality care in the hospital. Two, an amazing communication between the treating team and the family. And they, once they get into that situation, they would not say no to organ donation. And religion doesn't matter. But again, I had something to say to all these religious leaders. I told them, it is not enough to say that 
Hinduism or Muslims or Christianity is not against donation. That is a passive way of doing it. Please take the mic and tell people to donate. That is where we have been lacking. Where is the forum for all these people where they can talk to thousands at the gathering and tell them to donate when they die? And that is what they have all agreed to do, and we want to see how it goes. Of course, we involved a whole lot of celebrities, movie stars. Uh, Priyanka Chopra gave a bite from New York. And of course, this is our famous Blade Runner. He is one of our retired majors who again had a blast injury. Again, more to give. So very, very uh, motivating. We had walkathons in so many countries simultaneously at the same time, so many, so many uh, cities. And NDTV was uh, transmitting it live. And I would like to show you something very interesting. It was a Sunday, and this is the Twitter activity happening. We were promoting the event, and all uh, it was on NDTV. It was on all FM channels, on Twitter, everywhere. And look at this. Man Ki Baat, the prime minister's talk, which is very, very popular. When we started at about 9 o'clock, we were number three. But over the next two hours, more to give was trending above Man Ki Baat. And what does that tell you? That the people of this country want to donate. We just haven't given them the right platform to do the whole thing. And since this campaign started, more than 19,000 people have pledged to donate their all. Before I finish, I just want to tell you what it means to pledge. Like I'm carrying a donor card. It looks like a credit card in my wallet. It says that I pledge to donate my organs in case of brain death. Does it have any legal value? People get worried that if I fill this card, I don't know what will happen. What you have to remember is this is just an awareness activity. It has no legal value. Ultimately, the person who is brain dead is dead. He can't decide anything. It is the family of that person who is going to say yes or no to organ donation. So if I carry an organ donor card in my pocket at all times, and if my family knows this, it helps them in deciding. If all of us have this card, and we pull it out in a party and tell people about it, if one person tells 10 people about the concept of brain death, and those 10 tell another 10, that is the kind of thing that we need. And that is the only reason why everyone should make a donor card. It doesn't make you a donor. World over, even if you have a donor card, one has to be unfortunate enough to have a head injury or a stroke, fortunate enough to reach a hospital, to get some treatment, be on a ventilator, and then from there on, no infection, no multi-organ failure. So the chances of anybody carrying a donor card, becoming a donor, are very remote. But it is all about awareness. Awareness with the police is very important because you cannot do organ donation without talking to the police. You need police clearance in every medical legal patient. So the police people in every city have to be sensitized. In the middle of the night, they have to come and give clearance for organ retrieval. Police also comes in handy for the green corridors. This is something peculiar. And I remember when we did the first green corridor in North India, we did it as a trial run in 2014. And people were mocking that we don't have any heart transplants. And look at this, we blocked the traffic in Delhi. But believe me, within four months of that, we had this 32 kilometers in 29 minutes. And we took a beating heart with the help of police at speeds of up to 120 kilometers per hour, peak time in Delhi. And that is how good the police is now all over the country about organ donation and transporting organs. Spain is the number one in the country. They have a festival called Castile. And we have a very similar thing, the Dahi Handi in Mumbai. So if Spain can do it, I'm sure all of you will agree that we can also do it. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your patient care.
any questions for Dr. Sid? Um, Dr. I'm Kanika from G Healthcare. Thanks so much for a really inspiring and very interesting um, talk. Uh, my question is, uh, do you see the role of a neutral registry uh, being created, uh, which could directly help connect the donors to this registry, and therefore also neutralizes the role of the hospital, where certain amount of anger and mistrust might creep in on the treatment itself. So if the patient family do want to donate, they could directly contact this neutral agency and do not have to uh, say yes or no to the hospital where the patient was being treated. Uh, we have a system in place now, which I can tell you how it works. But the first thing is that if a family doesn't have faith in the system, don't even ask them for organ. End of the story. The whole thing starts with faith. If the, you know, the concern that some people have or had earlier, maybe 10 years ago, one, if I'm not doing too well, they might kill me to take my organ. If I die and uh, my organs are taken in my next birth, we believe in reincarnation a lot. I'll be born without the kidney, right? So all these are myths. We tell somebody, okay, fine. If you have a breast cancer, you get the organ removed. Kidney cancer, you'll get the organ removed. But when it comes to donation, why do you want to talk about reincarnation? As far as your registry is concerned, this is now the job of NOTO. We have the government organization controlling all this. We have trained people. We have brain death committees in every hospital. We have smaller hospitals which do not have brain death committees where experts from outside can also come in and uh, diagnose brain death. And as far as the second part of the registry is even more important, where there is a transparent listing on seniority and severity of disease on which organ goes to what, who, who, which person. That is very important. Super urgent transplant so that nobody jumps the queue, but at the same time, the needy get what they need. Yeah. I think it's an excellent talk, Dr. Avnish. I'm not going to seek any question. I'm just wanting to, you know, check with the audience. So how many of you believe that you want to donate organ? Please raise your hands. Wow. So I think that's wow. the impact. Thank you. All right. That's and uh, I think healthcare executive, you know, we need to do something. NDTV already on board with them. So... You, know, you can just go on the FOTUS website, you can click, 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 and you get this donor card which I showed you, or you can go to the NOTO health uh, or the website, you can go to the Mohan Foundation, which has done so much work in the country. So this card is not organization specific, it is just awareness. Ultimately, which hospital you are, in which country, what situation you are in, it is for up to that doctor to talk to your relative. So please do not worry that I have pledged with FOTUS what will happen if I am in another organization. This is a pan hospital, pan world, I would say, kind of a situation. So I think, thank you so much, doctor, you know, and healthcare executive, I think we should do something for them. We are a millennial driven <laughs> magazine. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> I am the only odd man out actually in the whole setup. So we'll <laughs> surely, <me> you know. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank you.